It's your man Jay Gray's report, and welcome to the College Football Weekly Preview Week 8. Y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Previewing the top five ball games of the weekend, so let's get right to it. Now, this weekend, we got crazy matchups of ranked teams. It's the eighth, it's the eighth week of the season, bruh. Now, everybody's getting into conference play, thick into conference play, so let's get it in. Now, first ball game, let's go down to... The SEC, we got number 21, Texas A&M, traveling to Tuscaloosa to play the number 7, Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Alabama comes into this ball game, coming off of a barely getting out of Fayetteville alive last week, winning 14 to 13. They scored 14 points against some duds that had lost 14 straight games in the SEC, make it 15 now because they can't, they lost last weekend. But here's the deal boys down in Tuscaloosa is not giving Nick Saban any room for error. This done now, look here, they came into this into the post game upset with old Nick. Nick, Nick got fired up at him. Now, he's won three national championships and a plethora of SEC championships, and these boys are upset. Why are they upset? Because it looked like they about to fall apart, bro. Think about this. The first four ball games of the year, they outscored their opponents 168 to 58. Then they show up with all dumb miss and got beat 23-17. So they only scored 17 points. Then the following week, they go down to Dull, Arkansas and score 14 points, bro. Hey, now, they won the game. So everybody should be satisfied that they won the game. They've only lost one ball game. They four and four and one, five and one. But everybody's the the, the fans down there going crazy. And I'm gonna tell you like this: Nick gonna bounce. Y'all keep on messing with him because he already upset, irritated because y'all are spoiled down there. So you keep on messing with. Him. He's already proven to you. I can win a national championship anywhere I got talent, bro. So y'all can mess with me, bother me. And I'm going to leave. Because <laughs> Nick is the man. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. I got Alabama beating the brakes off Texas A&M because Nick Saban is fired up this week. Let's move on to the next ball game. We got number 15, Oklahoma State, down in the Big 12, going to number 12, TCU. Now, here's the deal. I was all for TCU last week because they beat the Sooners the week before, came in with the work on these boys. All of a sudden, they show up in Waco last week to play Baylor and go to work on Baylor. They got Baylor down 21 points in the fourth quarter, and they went to bed. <laughs> How do you lose a ball game, bro? You up 21 points in the fourth quarter and lose the game. I mean, let's, what's the problem? I mean... Hey, I'm just gonna put it like this: If they can't take care of business this weekend with with Oklahoma State coming in, now Oklahoma State's five and one. They've been taking care of business. They look good on paper, but here's the problem: They got seven players on defense that are first time starters. They got five underclassmen playing on defense, and the three ball games they played in the Big Twelve so far, all three teams are winless in the Big Twelve. Duh, Texas Tech. Old Doug, Iowa State, and old Doug, Kansas. Now, Kansas ran Charlie Weiss out of town a few weeks ago in September. The first couple of weeks of the season, they fired a boy. Now, how in the world does Kansas got the nerve to fire a boy at the beginning of the season? That's like that's like the ugly bro breaking up with you because you making her look bad. <laughs> Come on, bro. It's Kansas. You never gonna win at Kansas. The best thing that they had going for them was Chuck Mangino when old boy was was out there going to work, sending going to to bowl game. Then he threw a boy out of a chair for sleeping in a meeting during the bowl game, and he went and told his mama and got him fired. Now Kansas is losing like crazy. So either you gonna have a bunch of soft cats playing for you, or you gonna have some real cats playing for you. Either way. You gambling at Kansas because you ain't going to win because you don't have no ball players. Let's move on to the next ball game. 
TCU wins this ball game over Oklahoma State. Now let's go. Let's stay in in the in the Big Twelve. We got number fourteen, Kansas State, traveling to Norman to play the number eleven Oklahoma Sooners. First thing I want to tell these boys: when you go to Norman, stop by Billy Sims Barbecue and pick up a hat back for your boy, cause that's the best barbecue in town. Now here's the deal. Now get. Bill Snyder resurrected this program twice. He brought it back from the ad, well, brought it out of the ashes the first time. Then he retired. It went back into the ashes, and then he brought it back in. The problem is, Bill Snyder can't beat Bob Stoops. He's lost eight out of ten ball games against Bob Stoops, bro. Now, last year they lost the ball game by ten, 41-31 in Manhattan. But my man, Jake Waters, went to work on OU. Had 348 yards in the air. Tyler Lockett went to work for real on these boys. Had 440 yards of total off, uh, of total uh, of all-purpose yards. He had 162 yards, a kickoff return, and 278 in receiving yards. So the reason I bring that up is because since September 29th, when Oklahoma started Big 12 play, they've been dull on defense. They've been averaging giving up 342 yards in the air. Everybody been lighting them up. Nobody in the defensive secondary is playing worth anything but Zach Sanchez. Everybody else is out there just got on a uniform. So I say that the Sooner Schooner need to take the two ponies off the Sooner Schooner and put them boys back there and play in corner or safety or something, tackling somebody because... Oklahoma could get exposed again like TCU exposed them a couple of weeks ago. But because they playing at the crib, because Bill Snyder can't beat these boys, and OU got more talent than Kansas State, I'm going to go with OU at the crib because they barely lose at the crib. I think they've only lost six or seven games in the 15, 16 years that Bob Stoops has been there. So, I don't see these boys coming out of there with a win. Let's move on to the next ball game. We got Stanford. Number 23, Stanford. Out in the Pac-12, going to number 17, Arizona State. Now, here's the deal. Arizona State's coming off of a bye after a huge win against USC. Now, y'all remember when they beat USC, when the dog was standing there, Looking at the ball like he was about to fair catch it on that on the Hail Mary. All the USC defensive back had to do was jump up and knock the ball down. And this dumb was watching it. And a boy just come right past him, pick it up, pick it off, win the game. So I, I already know that that dumb is probably at the car wash today, shining shoes. Because he sure ain't playing for, <laughs> for USC. <laughs> dumb! Now, here's the deal. After... Now, they're coming off this huge win, but remember, remember they got dog walk a few weeks before that against U, uh, UCLA, 62-27. So, Arizona State's not that good, bro. They just happened to win a ball game on a lucky strike. They got the brakes beat off of them a few weeks ago. Stanford's coming in, reloading, ready to go. They, they lost two ball games. But they got one of the best defenses in the country. I see Stanford winning this ball game because Arizona State is dumb. Let's move on to the big ball game, the one that everybody wants to talk about. Let's go down and check out the cornbread that Big Mama been making all week. We talking about the number five Notre Dame Fighting Irish showing up to Tallahassee to go to play in Dope Campbell Stadium to play the number two Florida State Seminoles. Now, let's stop right there. How in the world is Florida State the number two team in the country when they're the defending national champ? They won 22 straight and 10 straight at the crib. Talk to me later about Mississippi State, bro. Mississippi State got a couple of huge wins. They look good, but no way should they be the number one team in the country when you got the defending national champ is 20, won 22 straight and 10 straight at the crib. You know why they number one? It's because everybody's hating on famous Jameis. It's a lot of boys in the media just don't like him. That's what it is. But let me explain something to you, bro. He going to show up on Saturday and show you exactly why they call him famous Jameis. He was the number one recruit coming out of high school. When his first year starter, he has never lost a ball game. He's a 
He batting a hundred percent as a starter. Never lost a ball game. Won the Heisman Trophy. He got a skill set that very few people have, and he gonna show it to you on Saturday, Playboy. It's just what it is. What trips me out is you got duds like Mel Kiper get upset with him because yeah, he was an idiot. He jumped up on the table talking crazy, but Mel Kiper jumps out here and says, "I'm taking him off my draft board." Now, when somebody explained to me when did Mel Kiper start drafting boys? <laughs> I mean, he go talk talking about. I'm going to take him from number three and put him at number 25. Like that really make a difference, Mel Kuyper. Why don't you take it, take some of that hair gel out of your hair, bro, and then we can talk. <laughs> and look, everybody's talking about Notre Dame being the real deal, coming in with all the fanfare, etc. Let me explain something to you, bro. Notre Dame had to score 50 points to get out of Notre Dame Stadium alive last week against old Dale, North Carolina. So don't tell me anything about Notre Dame. And also, in two weeks of football, Notre Dame has turned the ball over eight times. They played Syracuse the week before, won the ball game with five turnovers. Played old Dub, North Carolina, in a football game, not a basketball game, bruh. Turned the ball over three times. You cannot be slippery fingers with the ball. Playing against a team like Florida State. Yeah, Florida State got some injuries. Yeah, Florida State haven't been playing as well as they should, but they playing at the crib, bro. So I'm just going to put it to you like this. Florida State dog walks Notre Dame this weekend. It's your man, Jay Graves Report, from the jgravesreport.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at jgravesreport so you can holler at your boy.